words about my friend, Eric Bosman. First to Crystal and Mike's family, I'm deeply sorry for your loss. I also want to thank you for letting Mike be a part of my life for the last 15 years. I met Mike at Republican Day one year. He came up and talked to me in that booming voice that he had. I was just a young 30-year-old guy that thought he knew everything. And he told me I didn't, and uh, <laughs> here was his card, and he would tell me what I was doing right and what I was doing wrong. So we would talk from time to time. Our first big project was a proposed second waste transfer station in West Chicago. It was a hearing process through the county, and Mike was there every night. We had so many meetings. Towards the end, the hearing officer was going to make a determination in favor of it. Well, Mike, knowing the rules that three county board members had to be present at the time, and there were three there, kind of notioned over to me and said, Jim, tell Kane and the boys I said hi, and we'll see you tomorrow. Which meant I was breaking the quorum and the meeting could no longer go on and no vote would take place. And that was Mike, the master had master of strategy. When people were looking one or two things down the road, Mike was five or six steps already ahead of me. I went over to Mike's house, who was a micro person in West Chicago a few years ago. Drove over, knocked on the door, Mike had two cell phones going, asked what I can do, and he barked out in that voice, call the sheriff, we need to use that reverse 911 to let the residents of West Chicago know what's going on and how they can get help. Well, I was on the phone immediately to the sheriff and he took care of that, and that just showed his love for the people of West Chicago. He cared deeply about them. Anytime Mike got involved in, a, in an issue or a project, was going to succeed because Mike gave 110% on everything. As we got closer as friends, we no longer shook hands. We always was a hug. He said, how you doing? How are those kids? He loved to joke around, as we all know. He always liked to go after Mike's fashion sense. He would always say, boy, I didn't know that suit was back in style. <laughs> or ask me if I was truly colorblind at times. <laughs> So one event, I was wearing this tie, which Mike had the same tie, and I kind of pointed out to him wearing the same tie, and he said, well, finally, my good taste in fashion has rubbed off on him. <laughs> Mike was not only a, made me a better leader, but he made me a better man and father. I've been involved in politics for so many years, but over the last few years, I've taken some time off, not gone to so many events, to coach my two sons in sports. I talked to him one day about that, and said I'd been getting some grief from some people in the community about that. And he said in that voice that he always says, says, listen, Jim, your family comes first, this other stuff comes second. You cherish the time you have with those boys. And he said, if anyone has a problem with that, you have them call me, and I'll set them straight. I was lucky enough to talk to Mike on the past Friday. He called me, I was in the car with my wife, we were going down to the Sox home opener. And he said, hey, the Daily Herald just called me and said, you got these tickets as part of a political kickback. What do you want me to tell him? And I said, well, Mike, you know me better than that. If it was a political kickback, I'd be getting Bulls or Hawks tickets. <laughs> we both laughed. He said, uh, you know, I heard about something. Someone's bringing another waste, talk, talking about bringing another waste transfer station. Have you heard anything about it? I said, no. But this mutual person has set a meeting with me for next Thursday. And I said, you know what, let me find out. But what do you want to do? He says, I don't want it. I said, simple enough, it's done. It won't happen. That's the kind of respect my cat, and he cared for his community. One of the, and then we talked, and we had just talked about the, the election. There were some things that he didn't like about it, and I didn't like about it. And he said, you know what, you need to say something about that. And I said, well, you know, I will. Next meeting I will. And he said, you let me know when and where that is and I'll be by your side. It's been a tough week. The tough part of it was when I told my two sons this week that Mike had passed away. I told my 11-year-old Jimmy that the mayor had, had gone on. He said, the mayor with the mustache. And I said, yes. He said, he was just here at our house on election night. I said, I know. And he cried. And I told him it was going to be OK. And then I told my 8-year-old Tyler, he said, oh, no, not the mayor. We just went to that chili thing with him. I said, yeah. He said, I liked him. He was really nice to me. You know what? All week, doesn't matter who they were, everybody I've talked to had the same thing to say about Mike, because he cared so much about everyone. 
And I don't know anyone who could ever say he might ever ask for anything of himself. He never did. He always asked for his community and for West Chicago. I just want to say, Mike, thank you. You've made me a better leader, a better man, a better father. God bless you, God bless you. It's my honor to introduce Don Early and Dirk A.